Hey guys, today I'll be showing you another project I've been working on and uh, this one's actually for sale. This is going to be for sale. Um, this is the Moog Liberation. This is the rare guitar Moog made back in the 80's and uh, I went through this one basically uh, replaced all comely fell components gave everything a full calibration, full service uh, has new sliders um, not too much I hadn't touched in this one um, something else that's really special about this particular Liberation that you won't find on any other Liberation is that it has a white new old stock chassis. That's right, this is a new old stock uh, white chassis. Uh, when I got this one in, it had a black chassis that was just beat to hell. I mean, it looked horrible. And uh, it had tape all over the back of it, and it was just sticky to everything. It was just nasty. So I, I took the chassis off, and uh, I had one of these in my Moog stock. Which I'll show you the box it came out of. It's actually came out of a Moog box right there. And uh, so replace the chassis. It's, uh, it's actually it's got a few blemishes because I mean it is 30 something years old. And it's been sitting in the box all of its life. So you kind of see some blemishes there, one there, you know, just a few here and there. But uh, overall, I mean, it's just it's probably the best chassis you'll see for a liberation. Um, the only other things I did to this one was I did add a few mods just to give it better control for modern synthesizers. I added a gate uh, output uh, with a diagnostic slot so for future, uh, you know, if you ever plug this thing into a big setup and you have uh, gate problems where you can't trigger a synth with it, at least you can see if you're getting a gate here or not just in case something, you know, something happens. Um, and I'll show you just an example of that. So if we hit a note. And you can see how you can see the gate signal going to this jack. Still kept the S trig as well, so you can actually interface this thing with the vintage Moog setup with the S trigger uh, Sense Jones connectors. And uh, so I just kept all that just like it was factory, just added this part to make it more usable. Uh, this thing makes a fantastic controller. Uh, the reason why it makes a fantastic controller is because it sends the pitch ribbon uh, CV, it sends the aftertouch control CV. It sends uh, tuning CV. It sends all kinds of stuff out to the CV out jack. So you can pretty much control any synthesizer with this now that, that is a CV based uh, setup, one volt per octave. Um, just a really, really fantastic controller. But, anyways, I'll just give you a walk around here so you can kind of see the overview of the unit and I'll give you a demo of it. I just want to make sure that you, know, that you can see exactly what you're getting here. Um, it's really clean, like I said, I went through, clean interface, clean the inside real good. Uh, Switch chassis out so I had the opportunity to really clean some stuff that I normally wouldn't be able to access. Um, there is a little bit of yellowing on these switches right here. They're clean, but it's just plastic has yellowed. Um, and not much I can do about that. But uh, besides that, it cleaned up really nice. The pitch ribbon looks a little worn, but it actually works fantastic. I did clean the uh, the carbon track and everything inside, so it's it's good and smooth. Uh, no no erratic jumping or any of that kind of stuff. Um, power supply looks great. The cable is a is it's got the full length cable. Um, let me unplug my camera here. I actually got it charging, so I can show you the case and everything here. This one also does still have the case that it, it all came in. Which is, it's pretty good shape. It's got uh, a little residue, which I'll show you here. From that chassis having duct tape on it, it actually stuck to the carpet right here. So it's kind of sticky right there. So I just keep this bag in there over it, like that right there, and just keeps it from getting on the new chassis. Um, so if you see that bag, that's what that's all about. But it's uh, just a really clean example. Uh, really good case. I will show you that when you shut the case, somebody did install these giant latches, which actually I like that a lot better than the factory latches, because these little flimsy uh, latches they use, they just, you know, they weren't really, I mean, this thing's pretty heavy, it's got some weight to it, but it does still have the, uh, the spring-loaded latches that you just push the sides on, and they still work on both ends, um, but besides the two big latches, it's still pretty much original of a case, but uh, let me actually go here and open it back up. But uh, you can see it's still got all, the foam is still good, it's, it's not uh, deteriorated, so it's got good padding inside. You know, everything feels good and, and solid. But uh, it's a good case. 
But anyways, I'll just kind of give you a back shot here of the of the unit. And just kind of see how clean it looks. And that chassis, it really added to the uh, the looks of this unit. And of course, the underside looks great as well. I'll flip that up after we get done demoing it and show you the underneath. But uh, anyways, let me put the camera on a tripod and I'll just kind of walk you through some of the sounds here. And like I say, this thing does have aftertouch control. Now this uses a different approach of aftertouch. It's using a fiber optics aftertouch, unlike the uh, multi-mogues and the earlier mogues which used a, uh, a carrier frequency across a wire which is then converted to CV. Uh, this is a lot cleaner and it, it doesn't have to be, it's, it's not as sensitive per area uh, like it is in like a, a multi where you actually have to adjust the bar height to get the keys to work right. This is pretty much uh, self-set and you just do a calibration on your controls. But uh, anyways, I'll just kind of show you here. Here's the two oscillators together. Oscillator one. Touch and I can control the mount by the force amount. We can also make that work with a filter as well, so we'll cut that off in the force of the filter. We can change our wave shape. We also got a sample and hold, which is really nice. And we'll generator off. We can also uh, make the force sensor bend rather than actually control modulation, so you get something like this. So you get something like that. Um, I'll show you the oscillator 2 works. Let's go here. So here's oscillator 2. Oscillator is working great. Oscillator sync works. Let's just go here. We're gonna bend. trap. Uh, if you have the oscillator uh, four sensor on, it affects both oscillators regardless if oscillator sync is on. So you get something like this. <laughs> but if you cut that off and make uh, the uh, four sensor be neutral to oscillator, it'll work with just oscillator sync. <laughs> So 
you get something like that. We'll go back here and set this back up. And now I'll show you that the uh, the glide control works. You actually got a switch for glide over here on your uh, uh, what would be your left hand controller. Uh, so we'll switch uh, glide on. <laughs> You've also got a pulley section, which uh, actually, let me show you the ring mod right quick. So we'll go oscillators off. Here's your ring modulation. Then you got the poly section. Like I say, this is a very basic poly section. Um, yeah, it's nothing like a poly mode, guys. Just so you know, this is using a uh, a phase lock loop circuit to drive a top octave chip, which then drives dividers. That's it. There's no modulation inputs, no reference oscillator VCOs. Uh, no polycom chips to wave shape, uh, no envelope uh, generators, no VCA really. Uh, so it's just a very, well, it uses the VCA of your uh, monosynth, is how this works. Um, but there's no independent, you know, VCA per key example for like a poly mode. Uh, but it works great, and what I love to do with it is I love to combine the, the uh, monosynth with the polysynth, and you get something like this. <laughs> What, you, what I love to do too with this instrument in particular is I'll put a little uh, modulation on the fourth sensor. We'll do a square wave. Let me get this set up right quick. We'll combine that with a poly section. You get something like this right here. It's top octave, uh, it's top note priority for the mono synth. Um, but uh, anyways, that all works. The filter uh, works really great. It's got that warm. You get that really thumpy kind of. Once again, 
the poly mode will either be on or off. Uh, there's really no envelope generator uh, associated with the poly section. So, so it works with your uh, loudness control for your mono synth. trigger as well. trigger. Uh, you can also, uh, I need to show you this too, you can actually shape your filter. You got a little filter control here. So if we set this filter up, it's just like a little modulation or a little, uh, it's, it's basically like our turn wheel for your filter. So it gives you just some filter effects. So you can do something like this right here. So it just gives you like a little control where when you got this thing on like a keytar it's a little bit more usable. And you also got a modulation wheel so if you don't want to use the aftertouch you can use the modulation amount wheel. Also, the, I'll show you the pitch ribbon work. Also has the the uh, release uh, switch, kind of like what you found the mini mode for the decay switch on the left hand controller. So you have as soon as you left the node, it's just released. So you get something like that. So you get something like that. Uh, I'll just show you that all the notes are actually working. are working great but uh, anyways guys that's just an overview of the uh, of the liberation here as far as what it offers and the sounds it can do uh, let me show you the underneath right quick uh, I'll flip it up here so you can see it actually I need to turn it off here because I got to do all this one-handed let me shut this off I'm going to shut my amp off here we'll disconnect the power cable I'm just going to show you how clean it looks underneath as well Go here. And it also, it's got the strap on it, so it's got a good uh, shoulder strap. 
this thing's going to stay up here. All right, so let me get the camera here, and I'll show you the underneath real good. Just so you can get a, get a good visual of what all this thing, uh, how this thing looks. And you can kind of see more little areas right here. Where it's got just a little bit of chipping going on. But overall, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's pretty good for its age. These chassis were known for, uh, for getting uh, hairline cracks in them, just from the, uh, from the factory even. And it was the way they, they made, it was a process they used to bake them, uh, bake this coating on. Um, but you can kind of see how clean everything looks underneath here. It's got all the hardware, all the screws. But uh, anyways guys, I just want to take a minute, give you a good overview of this, of this beautiful instrument. You can kind of see the neck, how good that looks as well. And I'll just kind of bring on around this corner here. It's one little, actually that's just a shadow, never mind. I was looking at my camera screen and not looking at the actual unit, but that's just a shadow. Uh, it's, it's actually smooth, looks great on the corners here. It's clean all the way up. But uh, anyways guys, like I was saying, I just want to give you a good overview of the scent so you, so you know what you're getting if you're interested in buying this one. A fantastic, fantastic example of a liberation. Very rare instrument in itself. They didn't make many of these things. and. Uh, you know, it's just a, it's just a beautiful instrument. Really, I would really like to keep it, but uh, you know, unfortunately, I bought it with business money, and I just don't really, uh, you know, I've got too many projects at the moment, anyways. So I don't need any more synthesizers. <laughs> I've just got too much stuff going on. But uh, anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. Appreciate your interest, and uh, we'll be in touch again soon with more restoration videos and stuff. Take care.